For many people, spending your retirement years traveling overseas sounds pretty good. If you're an Australian and you wanna move overseas and you wanna take your Australian-based age pension with you, will you have to pay extra tax on that? Aaron here from Offshore in Asia. So this video is a follow-up to another video that we made that was all about, can you claim a pension in Australia, then take that pension with you and go live overseas in your retirement? So the short answer to that is yes, you can, but there are conditions that apply. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link up above. And in this video, which is a bit of a continuation, is if you take that pension and you do move overseas, then how will that affect your tax? Will you pay extra tax? How much extra tax may you pay? And how will this impact your ability to fund your retirement living overseas? And here we're talking about taxes on the Australian side. We're not talking about taxes overseas in your host country. That's another matter altogether. Uh, Thailand, for example, they won't tax foreign source income if you're on a retirement visa. A lot of countries in Southeast Asia won't tax foreign source income if it's not derived within that country, but it's not necessarily all the case. Every country has its own rules, so you need to look into that and make sure that you're on the right footing before you make the move overseas. If you want to talk to someone about your tax residency status or tax and moving overseas, we can help you with that. And as a proviso, this is general information only. What we're talking about here won't necessarily apply apply to you or the guy next door. Everyone has a different tax situation. But what we wanted to do here is provide a general overview, give you a bit of a heads up of the things that you need to be thinking about so that you can better plan for your retirement if you plan to move overseas. So the first principle here is to recognize that the pension is taxable in Australia. Even if you're not paying tax or you're paying very little tax, it probably means that you don't have a lot of other income. So you're underneath or most of your income is underneath the tax-free threshold. But if you have other income such as investment properties, dividend income, if you're on a part pension, then you probably will be paying a little bit of tax. Now, if you do plan to move overseas, the most important thing in determining whether you will retain your tax-free threshold or whether you will lose your tax-free threshold is the residency status. So if you are an Australian resident for tax purposes, you will retain your tax-free threshold, which means you won't pay a cent of tax on your first approximately $20,000 when you factor in offsets and things. If you are a non-resident for tax purposes, you'll be taxed 32.5% from your first dollar. You lose that tax-free threshold altogether. So it's very important if you're moving overseas, what is your residency status in Australia? And here we're not talking about physical residency, where you are, where you live, we're talking about your tax residency. It is possible to not be a resident, a physical resident of Australia, not reside in Australia and still be classed as a tax resident for tax purposes. The residency rules in Australia are quite subjective and can be a little bit difficult to navigate. Uh, there are four main tests for residency. Uh, I'm not gonna get too deep into it in this video, but the basic premise is if you are a long-term resident of Australia and you have substantial ties to Australia, then you probably will continue to be a resident of Australia for tax purposes unless uh, you do a few things that then convince the tax office that you are no longer a resident. So that might include things like not having a home in Australia, cutting all ties and moving to another country. Uh, in a lot of cases, that would make you a non-resident. But it might not always be the case, so just be very careful there and seek advice if you need to. Now, if you were to become a non-resident and you were to move overseas permanently, uh, after a period of time, you'll probably lose access to Medicare, so you need to factor that in as well and make sure you have adequate health insurance covering you uh, in the country that you're moving to. You won't lose it forever. There is a process to get back on Medicare if you do return to Australia, so not all is lost, but it is something that you have to be aware of and to factor into your insurance plans. So I'll put some charts up on the screen here and show you what the difference is in tax rates comparing if you are a tax resident to not being a tax resident. So if you are a resident for tax purposes in Australia, your first 18,200 technically is the tax-free threshold. But as I said before, it's actually around 20,000 once you factor in offsets and things. And if you are a non-resident, then you go straight into the 32.5% tax bracket from dollar one. All right, so that doesn't sound too good, does it? Getting taxed 32.5% from dollar one, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, if you have a super pension in Australia, super is generally tax-free in pension phase under Australian law, so that will help out as well. There's also the seniors and pensioners tax offset, which can reduce your tax liability to increase your pension take-home pay. So now I want to show you a bit of an example of 
how even if you do lose your tax-free threshold, you will, when you crunch the numbers, still be better off overall by moving overseas, paying high tax, but uh, having a lower cost of living. So let's look at some numbers now. When you're in your home country, you get that pension uh, pretty close to tax-free. You might pay a little bit of tax, but if you don't have other income, a lot of it's going to be tax-free. Let's say you now move overseas, you have no other income, so you're now paying 32.5% from dollar one. You've lost a third of your pension. You've taken a 33% tax cut uh, more or less, 32.5. Then you've got to consider that if you're living somewhere like Thailand or Philippines or Malaysia or a lot of countries in Southeast Asia, your cost of living is a lot lower. For a lot of people, it is very possible to reduce your cost of living by about two thirds. So you might be paying about a third of what you pay in Australia to live. If you consider that, you're paying a third of what you paid in Australia to live, that means you have a about a 67%, a two third reduction in your cost of living. So you have lost 32.5% purchasing power by paying the extra tax, but you have gained 67% or two thirds in cost savings by not uh, having to pay for services in Australia. And then if you balance that out, you lose a third, you gain two thirds, you're still about a third in front. You're still about 33% up compared to how you would have been in purchasing power for your quality of life if you were to have stayed in Australia. Another way of looking at it is uh, when you consider the maximum basic rate for the pension in Australia, it works out to about $2,100 a month. Now, if you were to pay 32.5% tax on that, that would go down to about 1,400, a bit over. And then you look at, okay, I can have 2,100 a month in Australia or I can have 1,400 a month in Southeast Asia. In a lot of countries, in Thailand, the Philippines, uh, Laos, Cambodia, and, and many others, $1,400 will go a lot further in most of these countries than $2,100 will go in Australia. You're still better off overall in many cases. And here we're just talking about dollars like for like, but what you have to consider here as well is uh, if you're on $2,100 a month in Australia, think about the kind of place you're going to be living in if you're paying your own rent. When you think about how much it costs to rent a nice condo in somewhere like Chiang Mai in uh, Thailand, for one example, you're gonna have a much higher standard of living. You can rent a brand new condo quite cheaply over here. Your food money will go a lot further. You might very possibly be eating a lot healthier. You might have a more active lifestyle. You can have a much higher quality of social life over here. There is a strong expat community. You're not just sitting at home doing nothing because you don't have any money. The quality of life can be a lot better. So there's other things you have to consider as well that can make it more worth your while to live overseas if that is what you want to do. All right, so wrapping up the video here, guys. So just in summary, if you do move permanently overseas, you may well lose your tax-free threshold, but not necessarily. There, it is possible to structure things in a way to retain your tax residency. We can help you to do that if that's what you want to do. But even if you did lose your tax-free threshold, if you did get that 32.5% uh, tax on all of your income, you still can be a lot better off by taking that pay hike and going and taking your money overseas. You'll probably have your super pension as well, so that's gonna make a big difference. There's the seniors and pensioners tax offset, that's gonna make a difference. If you have other investment income, dividends, rental property, interest, whatever it is, this all makes a difference. So the moral of the story, if you wanna put it that way, is I wouldn't let it put you off if you do lose your tax residency. It looks bad on paper, but when you factor all these other things in, it's really not quite as bad. Uh, it can make sense to go non-resident if you really want, just wanna cut ties, set up, build a life there, um, or if you have quite a lot of investment income, it might make more sense to go non-resident as well. It just depends on your situation. Now, if you have retired overseas as a tax resident in Australia, let us know in the comments. And if you have retired overseas and you're now a non-resident for tax purposes, let us know as well. It's very interesting for us. We'd love to see what people are doing. I'm sure other readers and viewers will be interested to hear your stories as well. So drop us a comment down below. And if you are looking for a bit of assistance to determine the best way to retire overseas, how you should structure it, uh, to remain a resident, to, to go over permanently and become a non-resident, head over to the website and we'll do what we can to help.